Chapter 12, The Purpose of Gifts in This Early Church 12 colon 1-11 Paul and the members at Corinth had different spiritual gifts. 12 colon 12-31 The function of the supernaturally bestowed gifts in unity in the body of Christ. In chapters 12 to 14, Paul answers questions concerning spiritual gifts. There is so much confusion about supernatural spiritual gifts today. The supernatural spiritual gifts were temporarily bestowed on the early church to minister to the body of Christ and save the Jews next door. The study of these chapters should clear up any misconceptions about them once and for all. The Greek word for gifts is charisma. To understand the purpose and temporary nature of sign gifts it is important to be both biblical and dispensational. What does no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed and no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost mean? Doesn't the Bible say, forbid not to speak with tongues, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 39, and despise not prophesyings, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 20? Yes, that is biblical. Unless we also have a dispensational understanding of these verses, we will be confused. In chapter 11, Paul corrected the Corinthians about order in the church and the need to reform their conduct when sharing in the Lord's Supper. God does not chastise the believer according to the law today. God does not punish people with physical events in the dispensation of grace. But believers are chastened or instructed by His Word, by other people, and by the members in the body of Christ. Hebrews to Revelation are written to Israel to help them go through the tribulation and into the kingdom on earth. God will chasten Israel physically. He will once more shake not the earth only, but also heaven, Hebrews 12 verses 3 to 29. Israel will be chastened as God levies the last part of the fifth course of punishment on them. This course began with the Babylonian captivity, Leviticus 26 verses 27 to 39, Deuteronomy 28 verses 15 to 68. This punishment of the nation of Israel is because of their idolatry, spiritual adultery, over many centuries, and to purify for himself a special people of kings and priests out of Israel who believe in Jesus of Nazareth. The 490 years, 70 weeks, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27, began with the rebuilding of the wall around Jerusalem. Jesus Christ the Messiah arrived right on time at the 69th week. He will return at the end of the 70th week, when the times of the Gentiles, Luke 21 verse 24, will be complete. God gave Israel a bonus year or a one-year extension of mercy after the cross. But then he interrupted Israel's program and inserted the mystery between the 69th and 70th week. After the rapture, the fullness of the Gentiles, Romans 11 verse 25, God will resume his dealings with Israel where he left off, as though the mystery never happened. There are no men or women who have the gifts of prophecy or tongues today. All the gifts ended at the end of the Acts period. They were only for the early church. We are instructed by his word today and have his spirit in us. Women are allowed to speak in church but it must be done with respect for the pastor and respect for the men and women in the assembly. No one is to be domineering. We are to be polite, courteous, and say things for the purpose of edifying the church in an orderly and timely fashion. The Bible is clear that women should not be pastors, but we can teach the Bible and labor in the ministry. Paul and the Corinthians were given Israel's signs temporarily during the Acts period. Paul said, the Jews require a sign, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 22. When the men of Israel saw that their signs had been given to Paul and the Corinthians next door, they were provoked to jealousy, Romans 11 verse 11. When they realized that God was now working through Paul and the Corinthians, many wanted to believe God. First, the Jews learned that Jesus of Nazareth really was their Messiah, and then many learned that God would now save anyone who would believe 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3. 4. Paul said that the signs would cease during the Acts period, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8 13. 
The sign ceased when the diminishing of Israel was finished, Romans 11 verse 12. During Acts, he went to the Jews first to inform them that God had changed dispensations, and then to the Greeks, Gentiles. At the end of Acts, Paul set Israel aside for the third and final time, Acts 13 46, 18 colon 6, 28 colon 28. He told the Jews, Let it be known to you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and they will hear it, Acts 28 verse 28. By this time Paul had received the full revelation of the mystery even if he had not written it all down, Romans 15 verse 29. However, the canon of scripture was not complete until Paul finished writing 2 Timothy. Paul no longer had the gift of healing after the Acts period. Paul could not heal Epaphroditus and Trophimus, Philippians 2 verse 27, 2 Timothy 4 verse 20. The sign gifts ended in Acts 28, but Jews can still be saved into the body of Christ. God made a covenant of sight with Israel and gave them physical signs, Exodus 34 verse 10, Psalms 74 colon 9, Luke 11 verses 29 and 20. Some spiritual gifts were promised to Israel as a sign of their impending kingdom on earth, Isaiah 35 verses 5 and 6, Mark 16 verses 17 and 18. Luke 9 verses 1 and 2. Paul had the signs of an apostle, Acts 19 verses 11 and 12, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 12. He raised the dead, Acts 20 verses 9 and 10, and for a time had many other sign gifts. God used sign gifts in the past and he will use them in the future. God used signs through Moses and through Elijah. The Lord Jesus Christ did signs to show Israel who he was. He healed the sick perfectly and cast out devils. He gave signs gifts to his disciples and the Holy Ghost gave them to the 120 believers at Pentecost. God will use signs in the tribulation period when he resumes his dealings with Israel. The 144,000 of the 12 tribes of Israel will use signs. The two witnesses in Jerusalem will use signs, and the believing remnant will use signs, Mark 16, 15, 20. Unfortunately, Satan also uses signs. He did so against Job, through Pharaoh's magicians, he will enter Antichrist in the middle of the tribulation and do signs and wonders through him. I would like to add that I believe that both Jezebel, Revelation 2 verse 20, and the strange woman in Proverbs, 216 are the false religious system that is against God. On the other hand, the woman clothed with the sun, Revelation 12 verse 1, is believing Israel. The mother of harlots, idolatry, mystery, Babylon, Revelation 17 verse 5, is the city where the false religious system is in effect. It will be destroyed in one hour. Christ will set up his kingdom in Jerusalem. At the right time, the new Jerusalem, Revelation 21 verse 2, will descend out of heaven. Remember that the letters to Galatians, the Thessalonians, the Corinthians, and Romans were all written by Paul during the Acts period when he was still going to the Jews in the synagogues first, and then to the Gentiles. By the end of Acts, Paul stops going to the Jew first and just goes to the Gentiles, Acts 28 verse 28, and the sign gift stopped. Knowledge is power. God wants us to use the power in his word by his spirit to edify his body and help the body of Christ to grow and thrive. Notice that Paul says that God gave gifts, past tense, in Ephesians 4 verses 11 to 16. There are no apostles or prophets today. There are no supernatural divinely bestowed gifts today. But there are still evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Each of them must must work and study. We are to teach the things that we have learned from Paul's letter. 2 Timothy 2 verse 2, 1 Corinthians 4 verses 16 and 17, 11 colon 1, 1437, and the rest of the Bible. We can help believers to understand the temporary nature of spiritual gifts and the importance of Pauline dispensationalism. We do not need spiritual gifts today because we have the complete word of God and his spirit in us, Ephesians 3 verse 16. 
It is important to distinguish between spiritual gifts and talents. Talents are not spiritual gifts. Talents are skills in things like music, art, sports, and so on, which are a result of heredity, environment, and hard work. To desire sign gifts today is foolish and leads to deception. Nobody has the supernaturally bestowed sign gifts today. But the principles of unity still apply. The Word of God is complete and all-sufficient for ministry, 2 Timothy 3 verses 16-17, and must be studied God's way, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. We can use skills that we have learned to bless the body of Christ. If we want Bible knowledge, we must study. 12 1-3 The Corinthians had come out of idolatry and were worshipping the true God. The powerless idols were dumb and could not speak. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 9 Paul gives them instructions on how to discern if someone is speaking for God when they prophesy or are false prophets as mentioned in verse 10. Accursed means doomed to destruction. No one can say anything against Christ if they are speaking by the Spirit. But by the Holy Ghost they can say Jesus is Lord. Today, the gift of prophecy is not in effect because we have the complete Word of God, in English it is in the King James Bible. However, we must still discern what God's Word says and which Bible teachers are worth listening to. The marks of a good Bible teacher are a saved King James Bible believer who teaches the Word of God rightly divided. 12 4 6 The same Spirit gave diverse gifts to people. The same Lord administered or managed the gifts differently. There were diverse ways the gifts functioned or operated by the same God. Asterisk notice how the entire Godhead is mentioned, the same Spirit, 4, the same Lord, 5, and the same God, 6. Each person of the Godhead is Spirit. God is Spirit and must be worshipped in Spirit and Truth, John 4 verse 24. The context will tell us which one of the Godhead is being referred to as Spirit. 12 7 11 gifts were divinely given by the Spirit for the purpose of profiting all the members in the early church, Romans 12 verses 3 to 8. To illustrate what he means, Paul lists some gifts given by the Spirit word of wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues, translating of the foreign language spoken. Notice that discerning of spirits is lower case because it is the spirit in the man, whether he or she is speaking God's words. Paul told us that women were also praying in tongues and prophesying, 11 colon 5. When the Holy Ghost fell on the 120 men and women in the upper room, they all spoke in divinely given tongues and were understood by those who spoke those different languages, Acts 115, 2,4-12. Tongues, a spiritual gift, is being able to speak a language that you have never formally studied to learn. That list of gifts, all worked by the same Spirit who distributed the gift the way He wanted. Salvation is a miracle God does today. 12 12 13 We are one body made up of many members working in unison. All are important, no one is more important than the other. Romans 12 verses 3 to 8. The members are all controlled by the same head, Christ. Ephesians 1 verses 22 and 23. Colossians 1 verses 18 and 24. 2 19. We have a spiritual baptism without water. The instant we believe, we are spiritually placed into the body of Christ, Romans 6 verses 3 and 4, Ephesians 4 verse 5. The body of Christ is Christ's heavenly group of Jews and Gentiles. We all partake of the same Spirit. 12 14 22 The body of Christ is made up of many members. Paul will now use the human body analogy for the body of Christ. The foot is still part of the body. Each different part is still of the body. Paul says that God gave different gifts so that the body of Christ could benefit from each other's gifts and grow like a living body or organism, Ephesians 4 verses 15 and 16. God has placed every member in the body the way he wants. If everyone was an eye, there would not be a complete body. If everyone had the same gift, the body of Christ would be limited. 
But since everyone is different and has different gifts, the body of Christ can function as a unit. We all need of each other. We are a team. We even need those members who seem to be weak. Paul says the members that we think are less important are really more needed. 1223 Paul says we should bestow more honor on those we think are less honorable, then the less appealing members will become more attractive. Many of you know I have a daughter with Down syndrome. Like Hitler and abortionists, many in society would exterminate people like her thinking they are less valuable. But I have learned and continue to learn so much from her about how to give and show unconditional love and care for others. She is the cheerful greeter for our Bible study. When Nam, from Vietnam, came here for the first time, Grace ran to meet her at the door with a big hug saying, I love you. I could see Nam melt and relax. I could tell she felt special immediately. Grace excels in social skills and naturally has a doctorate degree in communicating love. I can only hope to achieve to her level. She is a joy to be around. If you ever come to visit, you can have a great, big Gracie hug. 1224 The attractive members have no need of more honor. God had duly mixed the body of Christ together so that there was a mixture of gifted people and he gives more abundant honor to the parts that seem to be less. It is not spiritual uniformity, but spiritual unity. It is not a homogenous mixture, but more like a fruit salad. All the different fruits make the salad so nice. 12 colon 25 dash 27 when some members do not follow Christ's apostle Paul, there is strife and division, like there was in Corinth. We should love each other like a family. There should not be any division, only unity. We should not prefer one person above another. There should be genuine camaraderie. We suffer if one of us suffers, and we rejoice and cheer if one of us is honored. There is no room for self-interest. We are one group, or team made up of distinct and different members. 12 colon 28 dash 31 Paul ranks gifts in the early church in the order of importance. It was first apostles, second prophets, then teachers, workers of miracles, gifts of healing, helps, government, and speaking in different tongues which were languages, last. Our apostle Paul was the first member of the body of Christ, 1 Timothy 1 verse 16. The prophets were able to speak God's words after they had been revealed to Paul. The prophets could also discern which letters by Paul were inspired by the Holy Spirit and the order they should be placed in the Bible. There are no spiritual gifts today. We do not need supernatural gifts today because we have something much better. We have the complete word of God and the Holy Spirit in us. Ephesians 3 verses 16 to 21. Paul said, desire the best gifts. Yet he will show them a more excellent way. 12 colon 1 now concerning spiritual gifts. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant. To ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. The Corinthians had come out of idolatry and were worshipping the true God. The powerless idols were dumb and could not speak. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 9. 3 Wherefore I give you to understand, that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Paul gives them instructions on how to discern if someone is speaking for God when they prophesy, and not a false teacher, as mentioned in verse 10. Accursed means doomed to destruction. No one can say anything against Christ if they are speaking by the Spirit. But, by the Holy Ghost they can say Jesus is Lord. Today, the gift of prophecy is not in effect because we have the complete word of God, in English it is in the King James Bible. However, we must still discern what God's Word says and which Bible teachers are worth listening to. The marks of a good Bible teacher are a saved King James Bible believer who teaches the Word of God rightly divided. For now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. The same Spirit gave different gifts to people. 5. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. 
the Lord administered the gifts differently. Six, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. God operated the gifts differently. The gifts had different functions. Asterisk notice how the entire Godhead is mentioned, the same Spirit, four, the same Lord, five, and the same God, six. Each person of the Godhead is Spirit. God is Spirit and must be worshipped in Spirit and Truth, John 4 verse 24. The context will tell us which one of the Godhead is being referred to. 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. Gifts were divinely given by the Spirit for the purpose of profiting all the members in the early church, Romans 12 verses 3 to 8. Dot. 8 for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, 9 to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, 10 to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. To illustrate what he means Paul lists some gifts given by the Spirit, word of wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues, translating of the foreign language spoken. Notice that discerning of spirits is lower case because it is the spirit in the man, whether he or she is speaking God's words. Paul told us that women were also praying in tongues and prophesying, 11 colon 5. When the Holy Ghost fell on the 120 men and women in the upper room, they all spoke in divinely given tongues and were understood by those who spoke those different languages, Acts 1 15, 2 colon 4 12. Tongues, a spiritual gift, is being able to speak a language that you have never formally studied to learn. 11. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. That list of gifts, all work by the same spirit who distributes several gifts as he will. 12. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. We are one body made up of many members working in unison. All are important, no one is more important than the other, Romans 12 verse 38. The members are all controlled by the same head, Christ, Ephesians 1 verses 22 and 23, Colossians 1 verses 18 and 24, 2 19. 13 For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. We have a spiritual baptism without water. The instant we believe, we are spiritually placed into the body of Christ, Romans 6 verses 3 and 4, Ephesians 4 verse 5. The body of Christ is Christ's heavenly group of Jews and Gentiles, Galatians 3 verse 28. We all partake of the same spirit. 14 For the body is not one member, but many. The body of Christ is made up of many members. Paul will now use the human body analogy for the body of Christ. 15 If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? The foot is still part of the body. 16 And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Each different part is still of the body. 17. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Paul says that God gave different gifts so that all could benefit from each other's gifts. We grow like a living body or organism, Ephesians 4 verses 15 and 16. 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. God has placed every member in the body the way he wants. 19. And if they were all one member, where were the body? If everyone was an eye, there would not be a complete body. 20. But now, are they many members, yet but one body? If everyone had the same gift, the body of Christ would be limited. But since everyone is different and has different gifts, 
the body of Christ can function as a unit. 21 And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. We all need of each other. We are a team. 22 Nay, much more those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. We even need those members who seem to be weak. The members that we think are less important are really more needed. 23 And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Paul says we should bestow more honor on those we think are less honorable, then the less appealing members will become more attractive. Many of you know I have a daughter with Down syndrome. Like Hitler and abortionists, many in society would exterminate people like her thinking they are less valuable. But I have learned and continue to learn so much from her about how to give and show unconditional love and care for others. She is the cheerful greeter for our Bible study. When Nam, from Vietnam, came here for the first time, Grace ran to meet her at the door with a big hug saying, I love you. I could see Nam melt and relax. I could tell she felt special immediately. Grace excels in social skills and naturally has a doctorate degree in communicating love. I can only hope to achieve to her level. She is a joy to be around. If you ever come to visit, you can have a great, big Gracie hug. 24 For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. The attractive members have no need of more honor. God had duly mixed the body of Christ together, so that there was a mixture of gifted people, and he gives more abundant honor to the parts that seem to be less. It is not spiritual uniformity, but spiritual unity. It is not a homogenous mixture, but more like a fruit salad. All the different fruits make the salad so nice. 25. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same. Care one for another. When some members do not follow Christ's Apostle Paul, there is strife and division, like there was in Corinth. We should love each other like a family. There should not be any division, only unity. We should not prefer one person above another. There should be genuine camaraderie. 26. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. We suffer if one of us suffers, and we rejoice and cheer if one of us is honored. There is no room for self-interest. 27 Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. We are one team or group, made up of distinct and different members. 28 And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracle, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Paul ranks gifts in the early church in the order of importance. It was first apostles, second prophets, then teachers, workers of miracles, gifts of healing, helps, government, and speaking in different tongues which were languages, last. Our apostle Paul was the first member of the body of Christ, 1 Timothy 1 verse 16. The prophets were able to speak God's words after they had been revealed to Paul. The prophets could also discern which letters by Paul were inspired by the Holy Spirit and the order they should be placed in the Bible. There are no spiritual gifts today. We do not need supernatural gifts today because we have something much better. We have the complete word of God and the Holy Spirit in us. Ephesians 3 verses 16 to 21. 29 are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? 30 have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? No. Even in Corinth, not everyone had the same gifts. They did not all speak in tongues, for example. 31 but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet shew I unto you a more excellent way. Paul said, desire the best gifts. Yet he will show them a more excellent way. 
We are spiritually baptized into the body of Christ in a water. The last recorded time Paul had the gift of healing was on Melita, Acts 28 verse 9. Chapter 13 using sign gifts in love and their impending cessation. 13 1-13 ministry gifts must be exercised in love and when they will cease. Keep in mind that Paul is continuing his response to the Corinthians questions about spiritual gifts in chapters 12 to 14. Paul also wants to instill in them what their conduct should be. He corrects how they should think, act, and labor for God throughout the entire letter. In this chapter, Paul says spiritual gifts must be accompanied by charity, then he describes what charity is. He lets the Corinthians know the gifts are temporary. Many of us have been challenged by the lofty level of love mentioned in chapter 13. It is such a high standard that we all fall short. The word charity means love, but it is more than that because it is the kind of unconditional, selfless, sacrificial love that only God has. We can only display this kind of selfless love with Christ working in and through us. By offering our bodies a living sacrifice, Romans 12 verse 1, which means we are ready to serve Christ by walking by faith in His Spirit. Then we have to be transformed, reprogrammed, by the renewing of your mind, Romans 12 verse 2. Practically we can only accomplish this by letting the doctrine given to us through Paul, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, Colossians 3 verse 16, by letting the Word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe, 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13, accomplish the results in us. We want to think like Him. We want to have the mind of Christ, 2 16. Having Christ in us, and His mind and love will result in charity or love in action. We must decide to live right, Colossians 3 verses 8 to 11. Today, we are not filled by the Spirit and caused to act perfectly. We must choose moment by moment to walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, Galatians 5 verse 16. The evil flesh can never be reformed, Romans 7 verse 21. When we were saved, we died and rose with Christ. Our soul and spirit were saved, but our flesh was not saved. We have to know, reckon, and yield to the fact that we are dead to sin, Romans 6 2, 6 11. That is not who we are anymore. We are new creatures in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, and part of the one new man, Ephesians 2 verse 15, also known as the body of Christ. Now, we need to decide to put off the old sin nature and put on the new divine nature, which is Christ's spirit in us, Ephesians 4 verses 22 to 24. The key is in Ephesians 4 verse 23, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. We must take responsibility for our actions while we keep in mind that as his ambassadors, we represent Christ in the way we live our lives before everyone. It is evident that the Corinthians were using their spiritual gifts and offices with an attitude of competition and not of love. The church was divided, and the situation was getting worse. The spiritual gifts that were supposed to build the church were instead causing it to be torn apart, disrupted, and become chaotic. The Corinthian church had problems, division, immorality, stunted spiritual growth, lack of maturity, and confusion in the assembly. The saints displayed poor, unbecoming conduct. Paul explained how they must use the gifts with charity. Paul then explained how the Spirit of God bestowed spiritual gifts when the church was in its infancy. But when the full revelation of the mystery had come, the partial understanding and sign gifts would end. The Corinthians were lacking the Spirit's graces. Paul told them what charity was, and then said you are not doing it. A person who does not rightly divide the word of God may not understand that the gifts have ceased. The body of Christ began in Acts 9, not in Acts 2. To understand that they have stopped we must look at Acts and all of Paul's letters. When God postponed the kingdom, Acts 7, the supernatural sign gifts were briefly carried over into our time period, the dispensation of grace, to verify to the Jews that Paul's ministry was from God, Acts 15 12, 19 11, 12, 28 9. 
Other gifts and offices were given to inform and edify the early church when there was little or no scripture written for it yet. 1 Corinthians 12 verses 7 to 11, 28. Notice that Paul uses the past tense gave, not the present tense giveth in Ephesians 4 verse 11. There is no written record that Paul had the gift of healing after Acts 28. What about the gift given to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4 verse 14? I believe that Paul is referring to Timothy being given the gift of apostleship, 1 Thessalonians 1 colon 1, 2 colon 6, which was probably in Acts 16. All the sign gifts ceased when the full revelation of knowledge for the body of Christ was made known to Paul, as he said in 1 Corinthians 13 verses 8 to 12. It was given to Paul to finish and complete the word of God, Colossians 1 verse 25. We have the Holy Spirit in us to help us understand what God says in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 2 verses 12 to 14. The Bible is everything we need to be edified and be made perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, 2 Timothy 3 verse 17. Today, we still have pastors, evangelists, and teachers, but they are not supernaturally filled with knowledge. Today, men are not called to be pastors. But the men who desire that office, 1 Timothy 3 verse 1, must study the scriptures to be approved unto God, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. There are no supernatural divine gifts today, see the lesson on chapter 12. We do not need God to speak to us apart from the Bible, there is no such thing as continuing revelation. God has already spoken, and His word is finished and complete in the Holy Bible. In English, it is preserved in the King James Bible. Christ interrupted his earthly ministry to Israel. In Acts 9, he began his heavenly ministry to the body of Christ. Paul explained that Israel stumbled, then fell, and then diminished, Romans 11 verses 11 to 13. Paul went to the Jews first as they diminished during the Acts period. In Acts 28, Paul ends his ministry to Israel for the third and last time and goes to the Gentiles. Sign gifts stopped. But individual Jews who believe Paul's gospel can be saved and become a member of the body of Christ. 13 colon 1 If a believer does not have Christ's love working in and through him then even if they are marvelously eloquent with their words, they are like the noise of an irritating toot of a brass horn or a tinkling cymbal. God has given us free will. We are saved by choosing to believe what God says. This involves the mind, spirit, heart, soul, and will, the action of a yielded body. After salvation, there is no self-condemnation when we walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, Romans 8 verse 1. We are not under the Mosaic law, Romans 6 verse 14, but the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, Romans 8 verse 2, operates in us. Before I came to write division, I did not have many of the graces displayed in my life. Because I thought the body of Christ began in Acts 2, I had put myself under the law. The law then made my sin nature, my flesh, come alive and abound exceedingly. Paul says in Romans 7 verse 9, I was alive without the law once, when he was under grace, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died, when he put himself back under the law, sin came alive in him. It was not until I started to understand the Bible rightly divided that I started seeing fruit in my life, Galatians 2 20, 5 colon 22 26. The fruit of the Spirit, graces, has eternal value because it is something we allowed Christ to do through us. This is another reason why everyone should learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. 13 colon 2, 3 prophecy without charity profits nothing. Without charity, understanding all of God's mysteries has no eternal value. Paul said that supernatural knowledge can puff up 8 colon 1. In Matthew 17 verses 20 and 21, the mountain represents a kingdom. In the tribulation, Antichrist will be setting up his one world government and one world religion. The little flock or believing remnant will be praying and fasting to be able to say to that mountain, remove hence to yonder place. Compare it with Revelation 8 verse 8. 
Here we notice that the second trumpet judgment of a great mountain burning with fire is cast into the sea. The city called Babylon will be destroyed in one hour, Revelation 18 verses 16 to 20. If we have faith enough to remove mountains but do not have charity, we are nothing. If we give all that we have including our lives, without Christ working in us there is no value. 13 colon 4 compare charity with the love and unity in Romans 12 verses 9 to 16. Paul describes the characteristics of charity, long-suffering, patient, kind, without envy, it does not exalt itself and is not prideful. The word vaunteth refers to an outward display of self-importance. Charity rises above petty squabbles. Love realizes that the enemy wants to divide the believers and decides not to let him. Charity is generous in the way it treats others. It is easy to love the lovable, but how difficult it is to love those who have injured or attacked us. Paul said, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it, for 12, Romans 12 verses 17 to 21. Envy is a terrible sin. Cain envied his brother and killed him. There is no room for envy in the body of Christ. There is so much work that needs to be done in these last days in the dispensation of grace. We know what God's will is for all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth, 1 Timothy 2 verse 4. So many are not saved because they have not heard the clear gospel message of what Christ has done for us, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4, or have added their own works to his. Furthermore, there are so few who have come to the knowledge of the word of God rightly. Divided, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. The truth for the body of Christ is found in Paul's writings, Romans to Philemon and is the mystery. This truth must be divided from the rest of the Bible which is truth about Israel's king and his earthly kingdom, prophecy. In the next dispensation, Christ will set up his one world government and one world religion. At this late hour in the dispensation of grace, it is all hands on deck. We should all be so busy about our own ministry that we do not have time to criticize someone else's. 13 colon 5 charity behaves itself as becomes a saint, gracious and patient. Paul is indicting the Corinthians for not having charity and unity. Paul is telling them what charity is and saying you are not doing it. Charity is not self-centered but esteems others above themselves. They were being self-centered. The Corinthians needed to remember what Christ did for them on the cross. When we were yet sinners and his enemies, Christ died for us, Romans 5 verses 8 and 10. Charity does not get angry easily, it thinks the best about people, and is not suspicious, accusatory, or paranoid. 13 colon 6, 7 Charity finds no joy in evil, but is happy about the truth. We want people to live with us in heaven and not go to that awful other place. We are thrilled when someone says, after 9 or 28 or 54 years of being a Christian, I finally came to understand how to divide the Bible and the message of grace. We want people to have the truth, joy, and clarity we have under grace and not be in bondage in a performance-based religious system. Charity carries the burden for others. Charity believes that it is possible for anyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth, the word of God rightly divided. Charity endures all things without complaint. Christ and Paul both suffered for us. 13 colon 8 love will not be done away with. What we do with Christ living through us lasts forever. But prophecies will not last and tongues will stop. Special supernatural knowledge will vanish away. Paul wrote this Corinthian letter from Ephesus in Acts 19. He knew that Christ would finish giving him the revelation of the mystery, Romans 15, 29, 16, 25, 26. After he had the complete revelation, it was given for him to finish writing the word of God, Colossians 1, verse 25. Words that are written down can be referred to and do not depend on someone's memory about what was said. Once the provoking ministry to Israel was finished, the sign gifts would end. Luke then stopped writing the book of Acts. 
Let us look at the last several verses after Paul arrived in Rome, in Italy, Acts 28 verses 17 to 31. Please keep in mind that the kingdom of God is made of two realms, heaven and earth. But first, let us look at when and where Christ through Paul set Israel aside at Antioch in Pisidia, Acts 13 verse 46, at Corinth, in Greece, Acts 18 verse 6, and in Rome, Italy, Acts 28 verse 28. Paul set the Jews aside in three different countries. He let them know that God would save the Gentiles in spite of them and without them. So now that the Acts period is over, so are the sign gifts. 13 colon 9 by this time in his Acts ministry, when Paul wrote 1 Corinthians, Acts 19, he had only received part of the revelation of the mystery from the Lord. Christ had said in Acts 9, but recorded in Acts 26, that he would appear to him and progressively give him further revelation, Acts 26 verse 16, 2 Corinthians 12 verses 1 and 7. 1310 when Paul would finally have the complete revelation of the mystery, the supernatural sign gifts would not be needed. 1311 Paul refers to the body of Christ as a child. The child speaks, tongues, understands, knowledge, and thinks, prophecy, like a child. But when the child is a fully grown man, the childish things, spiritual gifts, will be put away. We should not desire to go back to the childish things of sign gifts. They have been put away. 1312 Corinth was famous for its metal mirrors, so Paul uses them as an illustration. A person could only see a dim reflection of themselves in those mirrors. When Paul has the full revelation of the mystery from Christ, then all will be able to read and learn about what Christ is doing now. Then we in the body of Christ shall be able to see ourselves perfectly, know all that God has said to us, and be able to be conformed to his image, Romans 8 verse 29, by the effectual working of his word in us. 1313 God used the gifts to start the church, but now it runs on its own. The sign gifts ceased, as Paul said they would at the end of Acts 28. Now faith, hope, and charity remain, but the greatest of these is charity. Charity is our motive. Today the Bible is complete. There is no more revelation to be added to the Bible. The only other place in the Bible where Paul talks about a mirror is in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. We behold the glory of the Lord when we look into his word. The Holy Bible is our final authority. The Holy Spirit is no longer using sign gifts. Instead, he gives us enlightenment in order to understand his word. Paul prayed for the believers to be enlightened, Ephesians 1 verses 15 to 23. The Corinthians had more sign gifts than any of the other churches, yet they were immature babes and carnal. 13 colon 1 Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass, or a tinkling cymbal. If a believer does not have Christ's love working in and through him then even if they are marvelously eloquent with their words, they are like the noise of an irritating toot of a brass horn or a tinkling cymbal. God has given us free will. We are saved by choosing to believe what God says. This involves the mind, spirit, heart, soul, and will, the action of a yielded body. After salvation, there is no self-condemnation when we walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, Romans 8 verse 1. We are not under the Mosaic Law, Romans 6 verse 14, but the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, Romans 8 verse 2, operates in us. Before I came to write division, I did not have many of the graces displayed in my life. Because I thought the body of Christ began in Acts 2, I had put myself under the law. The law then made my sin nature, my flesh, come alive and abound exceedingly. Paul says in Romans 7 verse 9, I was alive without the law once, when he was under grace, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died, when he put himself back under the law, sin came alive in him. It was not until I started to understand the Bible rightly divided that I started seeing fruit in my life, Galatians 2.20, 5 colon 22-26. The fruit of the Spirit, 
graces, has eternal value because it is something we allowed Christ to do through us. This is another reason why everyone should learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. Prophecy without charity profits nothing. Without charity, understanding all of God's mysteries has no eternal value. Paul said that supernatural knowledge can puff up 8 colon 1. In Matthew 17 verses 20 and 21, the mountain represents a kingdom. In the tribulation, Antichrist will be setting up his one world government and one world religion. The little flock or believing remnant will be praying and fasting to be able to say to that mountain, remove hence to yonder place. Compare it with Revelation 8 verse 8. Here we notice that the second trumpet judgment of a great mountain burning with fire is cast into the sea. The city of called Babylon will be destroyed in one hour, Revelation 18 verses 16 to 20. If we have faith enough to remove mountains but do not have charity, we are nothing. 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. If we give all that we have including our lives, without Christ working in us, there is no value. For charity suffereth long and is kind, charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Compare charity with the love and unity in Romans 12 verses 9 to 16. Paul describes the characteristics of charity, long-suffering, patient, kind, without envy, it does not exalt itself and is not prideful. The word vaunteth refers to an outward display of self-importance. Charity rises above petty squabbles. Love realizes that the enemy wants to divide the believers and decides not to let him. Charity is generous in the way it treats others. It is easy to love the lovable, but how difficult it is to love those who have injured or attacked us. Paul said, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it, for 12, Romans 12 verses 17 to 21. Envy is a terrible sin. Cain envied his brother and killed him. There is no room for envy in the body of Christ. There is so much work that needs to be done in these last days in the dispensation of grace. We know what God's will is for all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth, 1 Timothy 2 verse 4. So many are not saved because they have not heard the clear gospel message of what Christ has done for us, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4, or have added their own works to his. Furthermore, there are so few who have come to the knowledge of the word of God rightly divided, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. The truth for the body of Christ is found in Paul's writings, Romans to Philemon and is the mystery. This truth must be divided from the rest of the Bible which is truth about Israel's king and his earthly kingdom, prophecy. In the next dispensation, Christ will set up his one world government and one world religion. At this late hour in the dispensation of grace, it is all hands on deck. We should all be so busy about our own ministry that we do not have time to criticize someone else's. 5. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Paul is indicting the Corinthians for not having charity and unity. Paul is telling them what charity is and saying you are not doing it. Charity is not self-centered but esteems others above themselves. They were being self-centered. The Corinthians needed to remember what Christ did for them on the cross. When we were yet sinners and his enemies, Christ died for us, Romans 5 verses 8 and 10. Charity does not get angry easily, it thinks the best about people, and is not suspicious, accusatory, or paranoid. 6. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, finds no joy in evil, but is happy about the truth. We want people to live with us in heaven, and not go to that awful other place. We are thrilled when someone says, after 9, or 28, or 54 years of being a Christian, I finally came to understand how to divide the Bible and the message of grace. 
We want people to have the truth, joy, and clarity we have under grace and not be in bondage in a performance-based religious system. 7. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity carries the burden for others. Charity believes that it is possible for anyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth, the word of God rightly divided. Charity endures all things without complaint. Christ and Paul both suffered for us. 8. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail, whether there be tongues, they shall cease, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Love will not be done away with. What we do with Christ, living through us lasts forever, but prophecies will not last and tongues will stop. Special supernatural knowledge will vanish away. Paul wrote this Corinthian letter from Ephesus in Acts 19. He knew that Christ would finish giving him the revelation of the mystery, Romans 15, 29, 16, 25, 26. After he had the complete revelation, it was given for him to finish writing the word of God, Colossians 1 verse 25. Words that are written down can be referred to and do not depend on someone's memory about what was said. Once the provoking ministry to Israel was finished, the sign gifts would end. Luke then stopped writing the book of Acts. Let us look at the last several verses after Paul arrived in Rome, in Italy, Acts 28 verses 17 to 31. Please keep in mind that the kingdom of God is made of two realms, heaven and earth. But first, let us look at when and where Christ through Paul set Israel aside, at Antioch, in Pisidia, Acts 13 verse 46, at Corinth, in Greece, Acts 18 verse 6, and in Rome, Italy, Acts 28 verse 28. Paul set the Jews aside in three different countries. He let them know that God would save the Gentiles in spite of them and without them. So now that the Acts period is over, so are the sign gifts. 9. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. By this time in his Acts ministry, when Paul wrote 1 Corinthians, Acts 19, he had only received part of the revelation of the mystery from the Lord. Christ had said in Acts 9, but recorded in Acts 26, that he would appear to him and progressively give him further revelation, Acts 26 verse 16, 2 Corinthians 12 verses 1 and 7. 10. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When Paul would finally have the complete revelation of the mystery, the supernatural sign gifts would not be needed. 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Paul refers to the body of Christ as a child. The child speaks, tongues, understands, knowledge, and thinks, prophecy, like a child. But when the child is a fully grown man, the childish things, spiritual gifts, will be put away. We should not desire to go back to the childish things of sign gifts. They have been put away. 12. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Corinth was famous for its metal mirrors, so Paul uses them as an illustration. A person could only see a dim reflection of themselves in those mirrors. When Paul has the full revelation of the mystery from Christ, then all will be able to read and learn about what Christ is doing now. Then we in the body of Christ shall be able to see ourselves perfectly, know all that God has said to us, and be able to be conformed to his image, Romans 8 verse 29, by the effectual working of his word in us. 13. And now Abadeth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. God used the gifts to start the church, but now it runs on its own. Now faith, hope, and charity will remain, but the greatest of these is charity. Charity is our motive. The sign gifts ceased, as Paul said they would at the end of Acts 28. Today the word of God is complete and there is no more revelation to be added to the Bible. The only other place in the Bible where Paul talks about a mirror is in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. 
We behold the glory of the Lord when we look into His Word. We need His Spirit to understand it. This is the end of part four. Part. 